I'm Allie. Join me in making this fairy tale necklace, which is featured in the Potomac Beads Advent Calendar. If you do need any of the supplies and want to check it out, don't forget to look at links below in the description of the video to shop with us online. So to begin our fairy tale necklace, we're gonna start with this section that clusters in the front and hangs down. I have here my combination of all of my blingy crystals and my four millimeter pearls. I also have some supporting 11 O seed beads, which we'll use in the design as well. We also have a ring here, and the ring is a 20 millimeter hammered ring along with two wire guards, and then we'll have our lobster clasp. We're gonna begin by utilizing some of our tiny seed beads and our crystal combo. So this is a great bash or a stash buster when you're looking at going in and um, using up some crystals, just laying out a color theme or a color template, a, not, a lot of nice supporting colors and going from there. So it's a sample, kind of like the Quicksilver, but we're gonna change up the dangle and the design a little bit. So I have here my four millimeter pearls, my 11 OC beads, and then my collection of crystals. I want it to be very, very heavy at the bottom. So I'm gonna do a lot of waterfall drops of crystals. And I don't wanna to have to constantly reconnect and disconnect the thread. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use our C beads. And I have some uh, beading thread here along with a size 10 beading needle. And I'm putting on my 11 O seed beads enough that I can make a loop around my hammered ring. So I have here 10 beads on. I'm just holding the bottom of the thread because what I'm gonna do is put it right through my ring. And you can use any ring for this. And we're gonna simply tie this into a loop. And you can see how that gives enough space that it can kind of swing around without being too tight along the ring. Now I'm using 11 OC beads. You can easily do this with 15 O's as well. My needle and thread is still attached here. And I'm gonna put on one more seed bead. And then you're just literally going to pick up at random. So we're doing a waterfall kind of design and it doesn't need to be a set design whatsoever. We're just getting that nice color look. I'm going to end approximately a half inch piece of my beads with an 11 OC bead. And this is gonna be the first of my little dangles. And I'm gonna sew back up through all of the beads that I just added. Skipping that first 11 OC bead that we added to the end to hold on that little fringe piece. I'm going to do three more, or two more dangles rather, from this same loop, again, to get that nice clustered look. So I'm gonna add a seed bead, add some crystals. Once again, no rhyme or reason to how you're picking them up or how you're utilizing them. If you want to, you can lay it next to it, just make sure that they're not all hanging the same direction or at the same length, because we want it to be a little bit varied Once you have it varied in length slightly, go ahead and put back on an 11 OC bead. Sew up through the design, up through all of those beads, and through the 11 OC bead. So we're letting that hang down. I wanna pull it up nice and tight so I don't have a lot of extra thread showing right here at the top. And I'm gonna repeat one more time. Going ahead, adding an 11 OC bead, doing a drop that's cascading down, and then back up through all of the 11s except for the last one that's added. Once you get finished with that last little drop here, what we're going to do is go back through our row of original C beads. So I'm coming out through that third little drop piece, and I'm gonna go back through all of my C beads that wrap around my ring. Once you're back through all of those, we're gonna get ready to do a new loop of beads. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to grab another 10 beads. So 10 seed beads. And then once we have those on, we're going to once again loop through the ring. So I'm taking my thread and needle through the ring, going down here to the base. And guess what? My thread end is still there. So I can take these two thread ends, we're reinforcing that, and we're going to tie it so it's coming off the last one. Make sure when you tie, you tie nice and tight, and that you don't have a lot of extra thread showing. All right, so now we have a second ring that we're going to connect to. So you see those two there. So we're gonna go through and do the exact same thing where we have one seed bead, and then we're gonna create our collection of drops hanging down. Again, it doesn't really matter what my pattern is for that. If you have a heavier bead, you might wanna put it at the bottom, but not needed. And you can see just this nice clustered effect starting to happen. Same deal with this one. I'm going to do a total of three total drops coming off of this second loop. There's one and two more to go. Once that third drop is completed, we're going to go in, find our second loop here, and just like we did the, the first one, after that third drop, we're going to reinforce and go around that loop. That also pulls the little cluster of beads that you did right underneath that loop. Now you'll notice what I did as I started going through my supplies. I got enough that for my necklace portion, I have the same beads on each side of the necklace. So I just pulled out of my mix beads that I liked in pairs of two. Coming out of my last bead here, you guessed it, we're gonna repeat one more time. So we're going in here, picking up again, 10 of our seed beads, making our loop. After we make our loop, going around here, going through, once again, grabbing onto that starter thread and simply tying these together. And that brings these cl this cluster all together at the end, which I really like. Okay. So we have six clusters right now. We're going to do an additional three more to hang down and getting that nice triple look from the center of the drop. So get ahead, go ahead and do three more drops, utilizing and using up most of my remaining crystals in those drops. Once you have your third drop there, you're going to reinforce your last loop going around through the piece, making sure I'm not sewing around my drops. And then you've probably already guessed, the last thing we're going to do is tie our thread onto that thread end. We're then going to burn off the thread end and get ready to do our loops to the sides. Going in here then, tying off this thread end. And the nice thing with a cluster look like this is you're not going to see the extra thread whatsoever because there's so much going on. And the weight of the clusters will pull them down and they'll sit almost in that firecracker manner when you're looking at them sitting on the actual neck of the necklace. When it comes to doing the sides of the piece, what we're going to do is keep the focus really towards that front. So I'm gonna use some of my crystals going from biggest to smallest that I kept out and then finish the back off with some pearls followed by some seed beads before the wire guard. To do this attachment, it's the exact same as we've been doing. So we're gonna take 10 of our seed beads here. And once these 10 are on, we are going to tie them in a loop around our ring. If you have a really cool decorative toggle that you don't mind wasting the bar, you can also do this for that, like the leaf toggle is really pretty in this design. Once you have that, again, just like we've been doing, go ahead and tie. 
leaving a tail that's long enough just to tie onto as we bring the thread back to reinforce. And then we're gonna come right off and add our piece. Now, the reason I said I wanna draw the focus towards the middle is because that's the design element that we're going for. So I'm gonna begin with my largest bead, which here is one of my six millimeter disco balls, and I'm separating out my crystals just to soften it up with my four millimeter pearls. So it's gonna be crystal, then a seed bead always between each, and then my pearl. Then looking back, I'm gonna go for the next largest crystal that's in my pile, followed by seed bead, pearl, seed bead. Then once again, next largest bead in the pile. So you can see I'm not even worrying too much about color and where the color lies on this piece. I'm thinking more about size and bringing that focus down. Once you have that on, continuing on with the piece, I'm gonna continue up. And I kept out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven crystals total for each side, so 14 all together. And then I ended up with two extra bicones, cones, so I'm using those at the ends. So I'm just gonna continue the design, adding in this second strand, and then I'll show you how we're gonna attach the wire guard which our jump rings and our clasp will attach into. Once you're finished stringing and you have your length, I put on a crystal at the very end just to make it easier to hold on to and then a wire guard or a wire guardian, wire protector. We're gonna be using that for the thread, taking our needle through the one side, down the other side, and then making sure that the thread sits right inside that U channel that it's created for. From here, I'm gonna take my needle and thread and go back up through the crystal, catch onto that same wire guard, and that's just gonna reinforce the thread going towards the clasp. You'll see a little bit of thread on the side of the bead, but you really don't have to worry about it. From here then, I'm gonna come back down the other side of the wire guard, back through the crystal, and then back through about an inch or so of my seed beads. From there, make sure that your thread stays in that wire guard. Go ahead and loop around, tying a knot right here at the end. And if you want to, you can feed the thread the whole way back down through the piece. Or what you can do is you can go in and you can just create the knot, burn off the thread edge, and burn it so you flush against the project so you don't see. The only thing we still have to do then is put on our jump rings and our clasp to finish off our necklace. Once you have your strings tied off and you're ready to go, all you're gonna do is open up your jump ring, slide it onto your wire guard. If you happen to have one that's soldered, you'd wanna make sure that you put that on before adding the wire guards. Put it through the wire guard loop. Put your lobster on one side. Close that up by pushing it back closed. And then you have your loop on the other side to look to link your lobster into. You can also, if you want, have a little piece of wire and do a little dangle down if you want and have a little charm there for the design as well. Thanks so much for joining me and having fun creating this simple design. Remember, if you do wanna check out any of the supplies or check out the advent calendar, go ahead and click below the video in the description to take you to our shop online. Remember, you can also change it up a ton. There are so many variations that can be done with this design and I can't wait to see your take on it in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Make sure to post some pictures there and give us your feedback. As always, you can give some feedback below too in the comments and let us know any changes, any design elements that you make and really help out other Potomac beaters that may be watching this video. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the next video.